For the past three years, I've been trying to build my own startup and not gonna lie, I've kind of failed at it. I'm not a billionaire, let alone a multi-millionaire. Instead, I'm still here working my day job and trying to build my own SaaS product on the side. In this video, I wanna have a deeper introspection and kind of reflect on past three years building 10 different products and really failing at trying to achieve my dream of building my own startup. So this video is gonna be a lot of yapping, a lot of rambling, but hopefully something a little bit insightful will come out from it if you are somebody that is also interested in trying to build your own business, your own product, your own startup, whatever you want to call it. So let us begin. I remember three years ago when I started off on this journey that I was thinking, oh my God, I'm going to build an amazing product and I'm going to become a multimillionaire within the next three months, or at least make $10,000 a month, which is enough to sustain my month to month expenses. And I'm going to be living like a king, no boss, financial and independent, financial freedom, independence. And here I am not having any of that right now. And throughout these past three years of trying to build something on my own, I think the very first realization or a lesson that I learned from this is that everyone talks about how hard it is, but it's really hard to actually understand and digest how difficult it is until you actually go out there, try to build your own product, get users and sell a product to users as well. There's nothing quite like that feeling of spending weeks or months trying to build a product and trying to get customers and everyone says your product is not that useful. But I will say that throughout the past three years of building and failing, it has really taught me a lot of resilience and more importantly than that, it has taught me that building startups building products, building my own businesses is something I truly love to do. In the early 2000s, when startups are still pretty fringe and niche, startup accelerators like Y Combinators were still pretty new. They were not seen as like the cool, sexy thing to do. They were kind of looked at as a little random. Like, wait, what? You're going to be building a startup? What the heck? But now over the past two decades or so, the narrative has really shifted where a lot of traditional high achieving people, they look at building a startup as their next stepping stone after going to a good college, after getting a good job post-grad, after climbing the corporate ladder, the next thing is like, yeah, I think I should build a multi-million, if not multi-billion dollar company. So it went from becoming something that was countercultural and almost fringe to becoming very mainstream and norm. And with this in mind, I think everyone has suffered from this entrepreneurship porn where everyone's like, I want to build a startup. I want to do it. When push comes to shove, they don't actually want to do that. These people that say that they want to build companies that say they want to build startups, they want to be able to say that they're doing it rather than actually enjoying going out and doing it themselves. And earlier on in my journey of trying to go out and do this whole startup approach, product building thing, I vividly remember that someone I knew came up and told me, if you're going to try this out right now, you will quickly see if you are really about that startup life, if you really enjoy doing it, or if you just like the idea of doing it. Happy to say that after going through 10 different failed applications of three years of failure of not making that much money off of my different products, I got to say, I still love doing this. I know that this is the right place for me. I know a lot of people, particularly in medicine, where they're like growing up, they were saying stuff like, I can't imagine myself doing any career in medicine. Medicine is my calling. That is my destiny. And I kind of didn't understand what they were saying. But now after going through the past three years of trying to build my own startup, being in this builder founder space, that is exactly how I feel. I feel like this is exactly what I'm supposed to be. This is my calling. This is what I am meant to do during my limited time on this earth. So if you're out there, you're curious about trying to build your own startup and you're trying to discern whether you actually like building this yourself, or if you just like the idea of doing this, just get out there, start building. Even if you have a day job, I've never quit my day job in the process. You can build things on the side. You can market things on the side. And then you will find out very quickly whether you have that in you to continue going through it after multiple rejections, after multiple users, after multiple failed customers, after multiple times launching a product and nobody going out to use your product. So that was a huge learning experience for myself. And like I just mentioned, I've been doing this completely on the side while working a full time job. And I got to say that is the best decision that I have made in my life. I think in the entrepreneurship media, entrepreneurship, hustle porn space like YouTube and TikTok, everyone's talking about quit your job, leave everything on the table, back against the wall. You have to have no other option. Quit right now. And I get the sentiment behind it. But I also think that there's a lot of value of staying in your day job and actually working away at these things on the side. I have two primary reasons why I recommend not quitting your day job and instead trying to build a product on the side. Number one is the fact that I think you will much more quickly and easily find out whether or not building a startup or being in the entrepreneurship space is for you. I'm a firm believer that with anything in life, like going to the gym or eating healthy, and if it is important enough for you, you will budget time for it. You will make time into your schedule. And likewise, I think that if you are really about that life of building and being 
being an entrepreneur and building your own product, you will find that time before work, post work, maybe during your lunch break to go build something, build a side project, at least launch it into the world and get a couple of users. I think it's a really great filtering mechanism to see how much you really enjoy this process that you like it so much that you're willing to do it before and after work hours as well. And the second reason why I think it's actually important to build things on the side and not quit your job immediately is because just financial runway is super important. I think when you quit your job and you don't have a regular source of income, it leads you to being a lot more short term thinking with the products that you build, maybe doing short term deals just for an immediate cash grab that you normally wouldn't do if you had a lot of capital coming in. And by having this regular capital coming in from my day job, I'm much more open and willing to experiment with these side projects as well. It opens up a lot more avenues of like maybe outsourcing some crazy logic into a third party API rather than building it yourself. And then it can also provide you leverage with finding other people to help you out with marketing rather than you handling the marketing yourself if you're not that good at it. And I also think just having regular income month over month just to provide for the bare minimum of like housing and food, building your own business is already stressful enough that if you were to do it with the additional stress of not having money, of having to worry about paying for rent, paying for food, I don't know how exactly I would handle that. I believe that that allows you to do the best work on your business by not being stressed out by a bunch of other factors. I actually think especially in the early stages, there's actually a lot of doing something and waiting a couple of days, maybe a couple of weeks to see the results of it. I have this conversation a lot with my co-founder. My co-founder and I were currently building this product called the Content Marketing Blueprint, which is essentially a database of SaaS products that have successfully grown and marketed their product on social media. So you can poke around, see the content that they're posting and get inspiration for your product as well. My co-founder and I, we've talked a lot like, oh, should we just go all in on this? But in the end of the day, I think it's a very different reason to go quit and go all in when you're still searching for product market fit versus when you already have product market fit. For example, if we built a product that it was gaining $10,000 every day, users were exploding, servers were constantly crashing, then yes, that is a very clear sign that we should go all in because in that moment, time is in fact a limiting factor. We have active bugs, our app is crashing. The only way to fix that is by putting more time into protecting our application. But on the other end of the spectrum, if you are building something and you're still searching for your initial users, you're still searching for your initial product market fit, having more time on your hands is probably not gonna change that. You still have to find that initial product market fit. You're gonna have to find that initial momentum, that growth momentum in your product. And oftentimes that's not gonna be just a more time or more hour spent type of thing. It's gonna be much more of working smarter rather than working harder. Another realization that I had during this three years of building 10 different apps and kind of failing throughout the process is realizing that there are certain types of entrepreneurs out there in the world. And it's really important for you to figure out what type of entrepreneur you are. I believe that there are kind of like two archetypes of entrepreneurs out there. Number one being an entrepreneur that doesn't care about the product or the niche that they're building in. As long as they see an angle that they can get in and exploit that angle and win and make money there, they can force themselves to become obsessed with that product. And the other type of entrepreneur, which I am much more like, is you are somebody that you have to really care about the niche, the customers that you're serving to push yourself through to build a really great product for them. The reason why I think this is really important is because with any product or any startup that you go out and try to build, there are going to be tough times, period. No matter what, you have to figure out where is your energy source going to come from to push through those difficult times? If you're like entrepreneur A and you're all just about winning, making money, exploiting that angle, that potential monetary payoff will probably be enough for you to push through the difficult times when you're in that trough of sorrow in your business's journey. But for myself, I knew that I couldn't do that. I tried that with one of my older products, which is called perfectinterview.ai. It is like an AI powered job interview prepping tool. And I just realized I don't care that much. I'm not passionate about helping people land their jobs. It doesn't pump me up in the morning. So when things got tough, I wanted to quit immediately. But on the other end, with the new product that we're building, the content marketing blueprint, I'm way more passionate about the niche that I'm in, helping businesses grow with the power of video and social media. Because of that, when things get tough, and trust me, there have been tough times already, I was still able to find find that energy and push through because I knew that I loved the space so much. And that is why I think you need to figure out what type of entrepreneur you are. There are certain archetypes and you got to figure out what is your motivating factor for during this process, because it's going to be hard and you have to figure out during that tough time, during the hard times, what's going to help you push through those difficult times. And I think the final learning slash reflection that I had during this process is that it's so easy on a day to day experience to feel like I'm not making any progress. And I think I felt that way because when I initially started this journey three years ago, my end goal was to eventually quit my day job and make a living off of the things that I build myself. But here I am still working on my day job, not being able to make enough money from my own products to live off of them. And even though it feels like I haven't made any progress and it feels like I'm still at the same starting point, that's really not the case if I look at 
at it objectively. So I've been building for the past three years and probably for the first two years, I built probably seven different products. And I think collectively all seven products made a hundred bucks. But then in this past year of 2024 alone, I have made two separate products and each one has made a multiple thousands of dollars. Well, okay, when I say multiple, I mean like $2,000. So hey, it's still, it's greater than one. It's still multiple in my books. It's crazy. It's the fact that in my past two or three products that I've built back to back to back, they've each been able to make $1,000, $2,000. Whereas previously in my first seven products in the first two years of my building journey, I wasn't able to make only a hundred bucks. Most of the apps that I built made $0. So I think even just quantitatively, when I look at the numbers, it's like, oh, I am getting better at this. Entrepreneurship is a skill that you have to get better at. You practice that, hone your skill set in. And even though it feels like I'm a failure, and I guess to some degree, I kind of am a failure, but I am getting better and becoming less of a failure. I'm getting better at this game. There's a really common quote out there that people say that every overnight success is 10 years in the making. And, and I think a lot of times on the internet, you see people talking about how I made a hundred million dollars at 20 years old. And okay, those are probably outliers, but also on top of that, they probably have five to six to 10 years of doing other business behind the scene to hone their skill set more and more over time to get to where they are right now. I know that I get frustrated feeling like I'm so old. I'm in my late 20s, so not that old, but I feel old in the general entrepreneurship founder space, at least in terms of the people that like to talk about it online. But now over the past three years that I've actually seen my skills improve and get better year over year, I do believe that in the end, this is all about time in the game. As long as you stay in the game, as long as you keep getting better every single day, there's going to be that time where luck comes across your hard work and that intersection in that graph is going to lead to a huge outcome. I'm still waiting for it and I'm still in the game and I'm getting better at it. Just show up every single day, put in the work, try to build something, try to grow something. And then eventually luck and a bunch of other factors are going to come together at one point. And then hopefully by then I'll have something bigger coming my way. But anyways, that is a little reflection on the past couple of years of building. I know it was a bit rambly. I hope you find it useful because I wish that this type of video existed when I first started. I'm just happy to be a part of this journey and still love what I'm doing on a day-to-day -day basis and finally feel like I found my life's calling, what I'm on this earth to do, to build businesses, to be an entrepreneur and just build stuff, you know? So that's about it for today's video. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.